It is Sunday, October 1st, 9.30 in the morning, and this is a bag of cheese that I bought from the Mennonites. It's farmer's cheese. I bought this, I think, in about 2019, 2020. It's double bagged, and it's been frozen in my freezer for the last three, three and a half years, and it's still edible and delicious, but this is the last one, so I have to start making my own cheese, which is what I'm doing today. So if you've ever heard that you can only freeze your cheese for approximately six months to a year, I'm here to tell you otherwise, but it really does all depend on your packaging. So there's the farmer's cheese from the Mennonites that I'm just defrosting. That's my last batch. Here's the cheese that I just made. And here's the herbed cheese that I'm almost finished eating. This has raw garlic, minced salt and pepper, garlic powder, garlic onion, and some mixed herbs, Italian herbs, which is rosemary, tarragon, basil, oregano, etc. So as you can see, my burner is, this is medium and this is off. I have it between medium and low heat. This is a triple stainless steel bottom pot, which is why the heat has to be a lot lower. And it's a cast iron element. So these are cast iron elements, which means that this gets really hot. And the idea is just to wait until you get some bubbles, not like boiling bubbles, but some bubbles. And then we'll add a half a cup of vinegar to this one gallon homogenized milk. I already have my colander with my cheesecloth. I'm going to save the whey because if I can't use it in food, then I'll use it in the garden. As tempting as it might be to turn the heat up on this to get things moving, you will scald the milk. You'll burn it on the bottom. So this is something that you just really have to be patient with. It's important not to mistake the bubbles that occur from stirring as the bubbles that you're looking for. Otherwise, you will end up putting your vinegar in prematurely. My heat is up to medium high now, so I've slowly, over the course of the last hour, have been increasing the heat. That way I don't scald the bottom. It's almost ready. We're almost at 200 degrees. As I'm pressing the spoon on the bottom, I can feel a teeny bit of scalding. Not a lot, just in one spot. So make sure that you stir frequently. You can see some action there. So now I'm going to add my vinegar and I'm going to stir. And now I'm just going to leave it for approximately 30 to 60 seconds. You can see it's already starting to curdle and this will turn a deep yellow green. Stir it again. Excellent. I'm going to turn the heat off at this point and give it another stir. And that looks like it has separated quite nicely. So I'm just going to take this off the element. I have a metal spoon and it has little holes in the side. And the reason I'm doing this is because the amount of whey that's in here, I think it will overflow in this container. So I'm trying to make my job as easy as I possibly can without creating a huge mess. That is what's called scalding. So immerse this in hot water immediately and let it soak, and then you don't have to scrub as hard. So now I just want to squeeze all the excess liquid out of this. It's still a bit hot. You can wear gloves if it's too hot. You can wait till it cools completely. So that little bit of cheese cost approximately $10, and that's pretty par for what I was purchasing when I bought it from the Mennonite. One gallon of milk to make that four cups of cheese yields approximately eight to 10 cups of whey, which is why either you have to use this or feed it to your plants or to your animals, if you have farm animals. I'm gonna cool this and ferment it. Even though it has a little bit of vinegar, it'll still ferment. And how will I ferment it? Well, I'm going to use some of my pre-existing whey from fermented milk kefir yogurt that I made. So I made the milk kefir first, and then I strained it through a nut bag, and I saved the whey because it's fermented. I'll just add it to this, and then what do I do with this? Well, regardless of whether I ferment this or not, I can put this in containers, plastic containers, once it's cooled, and I can freeze it. And I can use this in place of buttermilk. I can use this to ferment potatoes. So here I have a gallon of potatoes. I steamed these potatoes. I added a tablespoon of salt. I added some water, 
and I added about three quarters cup of fermented milk of your way. This is not fermented yet, but I did add fermented milk of your way. So you can use it to ferment your beans, your meat, your vegetables, even your fruits, your grains, your rice, your lentils. So if you do make a lot of cheese and you wonder what to do with all that excess whey, like I said, freeze some, drink some because it's 100% lactic acid, which is pure protein. If you want strong muscles, you need protein. At least that's what they tell us. <laughs> really what you need for muscle development in your body, branch chain amino acids, because branch chain amino acids will create protein in your body, which equates to muscle. What do you do with this now? So you can press it into a cheese ball or you can crumble it and you can use it anywhere that you would use feta, ricotta, or cottage cheese. And salt and herbs, delicious. I'm going to go ahead and salt mine just because I do like it salted. I'm going to add approximately a teaspoon of salt. And the reason why I like to salt mine is because it just, it's a preservative, so it helps to let the cheese last a little bit longer in your fridge. Mmm, perfection. And of course, like feta cheese, you can put this in a salt water brine and it'll last for months and months and months in your fridge. Otherwise, if you just salt it lightly or if you don't salt it at all, it will last approximately two to four weeks in your fridge. But if you do put it in a salt brine, it'll last for months. And what would your salt brine ratio be? About 5%. And as you can see, that yielded approximately four cups of crumbled coarse cheese. I forgot to say thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in another video. Until then, Ciao for now.